I found myself in the regrettable position of browsing YouTube Shorts. Thankfully, I came across an amazing video from 3 blue one brown where he animated an electric field. The core components of this animation included a blue electron, a vector field that changed based on the electron's position, and a 3D grid helper. I thought it looked pretty cool and wanted to recreate a stylized version of it in a GLSO fragment shader. I spent a few weeks trying out different approaches and eventually landed on something I was happy with. I ended up taking heavy inspiration from the game Sable, but also gave the final shader a more organic feel by making the outlines look as if they were hand drawn. In this devlog, I want to compress that multi-week journey into the shortest YouTube video that can still run mid-roll ads. Let's get started. I started by setting up ray march scene with a for loop using the camera position as the ray origin and the normalized UV coordinates as the ray direction. The main purpose of this loop is to look for the distance to the nearest object returned from the map function, where we sculpt our entire scene. In the map function, I use the sign distance fields of a cylinder and a cone to sculpt the arrow's base and head. Running this function through the normal domain would result in a single arrow at the center of the screen, but we need a few more errors than that. So I changed the domain of this function using the mod operator to repeat it infinitely across the x, y, and z axes. And I also rotated the domain of the arrows based on their positions in the x, z space as a way to practice rotations. Now that I had an idea of how to draw a vector field, I decided to switch gears and work on the 3D grid helper. We can use a sign distance field of a capsule to represent the x, y, and z axes of the 3D grid and color them red, green, and blue respectively. We can use domain repetition on the sign distance field of a box to represent the grid markers. Composing these two functions together gives us the 3D grid you see before you. The next step is to pair the shader with our previous one and add an electron. I started by limiting the domain repetition of the arrows along the XC plane, adding in the 3D grid helper and a sphere. The next step was to move the arrows based on the electron's position. I asked ChatGPT to convert the electric field equation into GLSL code and used it to get the direction the arrow is supposed to face based on the domain repetition ID. I changed the direction of the domain to match the direction of the electric field before passing it in to construct the array SDF. This ensured that the arrow's direction was correct. With this step completed, we recreated a basic version of 3 blue one browns animation. Now we can focus on the fun part, stylizing the shader. My first thought was to apply a tune shader because I really like the visual style of video games like Breath of the Wild. I started by replacing the 3D grid helper with a checkerboard floor that essentially conveys the same information about the scene. Checkerboard tutorial link below. I used the central differences method to calculate the normals of the sign distance field generated in the map function. Then I passed the normals and light direction into a function that calculates the tune shading effect courtesy of our good old friend ChatGPT. After that, I mixed the result of the tune shader with some noise to add a film grain effect. The shader was starting to look good, but I knew I could do more. I decided to make each shape pop out more using a Sobel filter for edge detection. However, this approach requires us to split up our simple shader into two separate passes. In the first pass, we calculate the normals and the depth values just as we did before and create a buffer with them. In the second pass, we read these values in from the buffer and run them through our Sobel filter to draw the outlines. I decided to limit using the Sobel filter on the alpha channel because it's a lot of texture reads and my computer's GPU started to scream as if I was performing the Cruciaritis curse on it. I could have combined this outline with the tune shader and called it a day, but then I remembered that USS Game Dev made a video about how to recreate the Sable art style using a Sobel filter. Since I was already halfway there, I decided to give it a shot. The first thing I did was update the scene to use pastel colors. I did this by replacing the normal buffer with colors. I also added some noise to the way we sample the texture in the Sobel filter. This makes it so that the outline is not perfectly aligned with the actual outline of the object. I really like this look because it makes it feel like the shader is hand drawn and colored on a chalkboard. To use colors and normals together, we need to change our two pass shader into a three pass shader. In the first pass, we continue to store the color and depth values, and in the second pass, we store the normals. Note that the Sable art style also includes specular highlights, so I calculated those values and baked them into the normal buffer in the second pass. At the same time, I created a crosshatch shader and used it to shade the object based on the luma value. This value represents the perceived brightness at a particular pixel. And there you have it. After a month of experiments and more than a 
dozen shaders, I recreated three blue, one brown's electric field and gave it a minimal, retro, hand-drawn look with Sable's art style. I'm pretty happy with the results. And now I'd like to hear from you guys. What do you think about this stylized electric field shader? Is there anything you'd change or improve about it? And what animation should I recreate next? Leave anything related to shaders and computer graphics down in the comments below, and I'll try to respond to all of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.